This is Ralph Versluis with AdCap Network Systems. Today I'm going to talk about LAN upgrades. Uh, a lot of people have local area networks that they've had for a number of years, and there's a couple different things that are driving the upgrade on the local area networks right now. And so the big one is the switch in uplink and server speeds from 1 gig to 10 gig. So let's talk about how uh, what people mostly have for the local area networks right now and how that 1 gig to 10 gig change is affecting things. So um, if people have designed their local area networks through typical Cisco best practices for high availability local area network design, they end up with typically three different layers. A core, which is high speed um, transport, distribution, and access. And they serve different functions. And a lot of times, times in mid-sized local area networks, core and distribution is, is collapsed into a single switch. So for example, uh, we might have uh, an internally redundant uh, 6500 switch, or a stack of uh, 37 sw 3750 switches that are linked together. And this could be the core uh, the collapsed core and distribution layer, uh, and then the access layer, because Ethernet has about a 300 foot limitation, uh, there's connections out to a number of different wiring closets from here. In each of those closets, there'd be stacks of access layer switches, and uh, over the last few years, typical switches from that would be maybe the Cisco 2960 uh, switches. And typically in these cases, in order to make them reliable, we would link these stacks of switches together and then do uh, redundant uplinks back up. And even though it costs a little bit more to do that, uh, to have redundant uplinks, because in many cases these are either copper or even fiber uh, links out to these different switch closets where they have stacks. Um, this way, any single switch failure is only going to affect the folks that are locally connected to the switches. And a lot of folks have made the conversion to use their switches not only just for uh, workstation uh, connection back to the servers at the core, but also for wireless access points and IP phones that are uh, powered, uh, powered over Ethernet. And then, in this type of design, uh, with a number of 1 gig connections, uh, all the servers could be dual homed into redundant um, into redundant connections as well. So this is a typical design that people might have done over the last uh, five years. Uh, this follows the Cisco high availability uh, network design. The thing is, uh, things are coming faster now. So servers are switching over to having 10 gig on the motherboard. And 10 gig is a heck of a lot faster than 1 gig. In fact, a lot of the servers that people are putting out there these days um, they tend to have six to eight one gig connections on them. And that's six to eight one gig connections because that's best practice design for server virtualization. And those uh, connections are used for many different things. And some of them will have storage access, uh, for example, either fiber channel storage access or um, iSCSI uh, storage access. So what we're going for, from is a situation where we have probably hundreds of uh, gig connections for servers and then uh, many uplink, either copper or fiber uh, gigabit uplinks into this collapsed core distribution switch and then uh, typically 10-100 connections out to the desktops. So like I said, one of the big drivers for this is servers switching over to 10 gig. So all of a sudden we need to have lots of 10 gig connections at the core and distribution switch layer. The other is there's a heck of a lot of mobility going on. Tablets, people moving around, access points. So people are adding a bunch of access points, but with 802.11n, in which access points that have dual band capability can connect out to all their users at a combined uh, 600 megabits per second, these access points need 1 gig links. So we're going from 10 100 to the desktop to gig to the desktop and access points. And switches are 
They're used for a bunch of different things. The most important thing is not looking at the actual specs of the switch, but what you're trying to do with the local area network. Typically, local area networks only get upgraded when there's applications or requirements that drive them. So, one of the requirements that's driving them is wholesale servers switch over to faster servers due to virtualization or uh, virtual desktop infrastructure deployment. The other is uh, faster wireless connections and the desire for people not to uh, buy into old technology. People are starting to consider 10-100 uh, networking old technology and seeing a requirement for gig. So because of those requirements, we're going through a local area network upgrade cycle right now and people are looking for best practices of what to do. So uh, changing from this existing type of te topology uh, is pretty straightforward from a cabling plant standpoint. So the copper that's uh, out there is going to be CAT 5E in most cases or CAT 6 and that can handle gig just fine. Uh, one of the issues is if we're looking at going gig to the desktop and we're looking to do 10 gig uplinks um, here, a lot of the closet uh, links tend to be multi-mode fiber. And 10 gig doesn't work over multi-mode fiber, um, at least not very far. And so in a lot of these cases, we've got to look at re-pulling some of that fiber with single-mode fiber. So make sure you work that into your costs. So if we're moving to a situation where the servers are connecting in at uh, 10 gig and the uh, um, and the access layers are looking at connecting at 10 gig. It would seem that we would want to just straightforwardly uh, just upgrade everything to faster speed switches. But there's an issue with that. Because along with this changeover to uh, 10 gig on servers, most organizations are moving to a shared storage from a direct attached storage environment. So direct attached storage just means drives inside the servers. And shared storage means using external storage rates like an EMC or a NetApp or a um, Equilogic or something like that, a big box of disks that's connected at high speed back to all the servers. So the, that has made, and, and all that connection for storage happens either with, with a fiber channel uh, storage area network or with um, iSCSI, and that's typically de in a dedicated um, Ethernet network environment. So, but it's all at layer two, so there's no real layer to switching environment. So what we're ending up with is uh, a separate server local area network that's dedicated uh, 10 gig uh, for Ethernet. And in some cases, we'll have a uh, storage area network that's fiber channel. But even that, in some cases, is migrating over to iSCSI. Uh, or even fiber channel over Ethernet. And we'll talk about fiber channel over Ethernet in, uh, in a little bit. But the, still the basics of the high availability network design stay in place um, with the access layer, the distribution layer, uh, the core layer, but we're adding uh, the server and storage uh, element to it as well. So let's talk about what switches that we're going to want to use because of the, the 10 gig requirements that we have here. So, draw this out. Okay, so we still want to do a lot of the same things, uh, but at the access layer, uh, we usually, organizations vary on what they do, but typically at the access layer, we really only need layer two switches. It's possible to do layer three switching in the closets. In most cases, there's really not a need to, that, to do that because it complicates things excessively. And since there's not really a lot of peer-to-peer -peer traffic. So the switch I prefer for uh, access layer switching uh, is the Cisco 2960S. So the 2960-S um, is, a, is a flexible type switch. It comes with a lot of different capabilities. And so let's talk about what some of those capabilities that you're going to want in an access layer switch are. Um, because you want it to do things, and the typical things that we want it to do are be ready for wireless, uh, certainly for voice over IP and for um, being able to handle video and virtual desktop infrastructure. So in addition to the basics of being able to have reliable switches um, in a more distributed environment, they have to certainly be manageable remotely and to slot into uh, network management type applications 
got to be secure. If you're going to be putting everything over your data network, they have to have a lot of security features built in. That's one of the big.